from the city with palm trees and 80 degrees. It was North Carolina winning on the road 27-24 at Miami to remain undefeated in conference play vaulting the Tar Heels into pole position for the Coastal Division like they were Max Verstappen in the Miami Grand Prix. Sure, the car took some minor damage around some tight turns, but when the checkered flag came out, it was Carolina in the winner's circle with the ball in DeAndre Boykin's hands as he sealed it with an interception. For a defense that checked into this game at 113th in scoring, the Tar Heel defenders won this game. The defensive backs playing 10 yards off makes you want to pull your hair out every so often, but you saw the effectiveness in a defense that keeps everything in front with that bend but don't break approach. You force an opponent to play conservatively, dinking and dunking its way down the field, having to take what is given. For the most part, it is extremely difficult to repeatedly go 70 plus yards over a 10 plus play stretch. Much like the 2015 team for Carolina under Gene Chizik, this team has to live with being tough near the red zone when the field condenses. Between forcing a turnover on downs in the first half and Cedric Gray punching one out late in the second, you got that from the defense and it's my opinion that the defensive performance was much better than the box score might indicate. Looking at it, you see Tyler Van Dyke putting up video game-like numbers thrown for over 400 yards, yet it was UNC that won that battle by making the Miami offense one-dimensional, holding the Hurricanes to 1.8 yards per carry. Paired with a top 10 offense, that group showed the formula today with being opportunistic. Through four weeks, it was a unit that didn't do any one thing particularly great, let alone average. However, the past two games, it won at the line of scrimmage and hung its hat on stopping the run. I have to give credit to the defensive line for moving the point of attack and living in backfields. Guys like Miles Murphy, Keyshawn Silver, Dez Evans, and Noah Taylor were playing low with great pad level. If I was giving out a helmet sticker, it would go to Cedric Gray, who is Carolina's best defender on defense. He plugs holes with physicality, and he shows up time and time again, making the clutch plays from that forced fumble to keeping ball carriers in bounds late. Simply put, he makes winning plays. He is proof that when you play hard, good things happen. When UNC can win a game without their all-world offense lighting it up, it's an encouraging sign and shows the potential for this group with the only points the Tar Heels got in the second half being two Noah Burnett field goals. With how poison patient Drake May is in the pocket, you almost forget that this was just his sixth career start at the collegiate level. He showed that inexperience in small doses tonight, but those moments are so far and few between. He has had his big signature moment to date when he was being dragged to the ground, got the throw off, and Josh Downs pinballed his way into the end zone. For the conference, the story coming into the season was the expected strong quarterback play from guys like Devin Leary, Tyler Van Dyke, and Sam Hartman. Yet, for the most part, Drake May looks head and shoulders above the competition. The confidence that he gives both sides of the ball has to be astronomical. Assuming that the defense keeps trending in the right direction with May at the helm, the Heels have to become the overwhelming favorites to make it to Charlotte to represent their side of the conference. Miami, I'm already looking forward to the next time. For Inside Carolina, I'm Taylor Vipolis, signing off from Hard Rock Stadium.